How y'all doing? My name is Sabri Thompson, and this is the first episode of the Fit and Professional Podcast. This is a long time in the making. Um, we tried to do this two years ago over Zoom, but we had some technical difficulties. So I'm excited to bring you back um, to the Fit and Professional Podcast, and I look forward to featuring many guests to talk about their fit and professional lifestyle, how they use fitness to fuel their successful and professional life. And today we have Dr. Sean James with us. Uh, we did this, what, what, two years ago? Yeah, it was a while ago. A while ago on Zoom call, but yeah, we got it through. Yeah, so it was only right to bring you back for the first time. I mean, we have these kind of conversations like every day, you know, mostly throughout the week and stuff like that. So I definitely think you have a lot of knowledge to share. And I definitely want to just hear a little bit about your story yeah. and how you use fitness to, you know, fuel your successful life and hear a little bit about your journey. I appreciate the invite, bro. Oh, no problem. No problem. Sure. Yeah, so we're going to get it right into it. So first off, tell people who you are. Um, how you got to where you are today, a little bit of background on how we got to Dr. James. So uh, my name is Sean James. Uh, I'm a board certified naturopathic doctor. Um, basically how I got into this, man, just my whole life, I kind of always struggled with health, bro. Mm -hmm. Always struggled with weight, uh, mental health. Mm -hmm. um, like you could say body dysmorphia. I didn't know what that was at the time, mm -hmm. but um, you know, just wanted to always enhance myself to the highest level. And I had a mental picture of what I always knew I could look like but I just knew it was certain practical steps I had to take to get there. So, you know, just going down a rabbit hole of health, you know, figuring out what worked for me, what don't work for me. And then um, getting to the point now where, you know, just completed the doctor, you know, program. So um, just wanted to see myself and those around me in the community get healthier. That's one of my biggest things that I take pride and joy in. Okay. So you talk about bias, morphine and things like that. So is this something that started in your childhood? Like when did when did you know that, hey, I have to change something and I wanted to you know, I know the story, but like, how did you get, you know, take those steps to, and then, you know, create your business and now helping others? Like, what are some of the, you know, like those turning points in your life that, you know, started it? So I could go back, man. It was, um, it was seventh grade. Um, I remember in lunch, you know, where they had pickle sticks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically if people that don't know what those are, there's like the breakfast version of corn dogs. Right. So this time in lunch, they was giving out four. Okay. So that's already a double lunch, technically. It's right. four of them. But then I got a double lunch on top of that, bro. So I had <laughs> eight. Bro, I ate so much. I felt so stuffed and full, right? So you remember back in school, they had the desk connected to the chairs. Right, right. So when I came back from lunch, bro, I couldn't fit in the desk and chair no more. I, in seventh grade, I was 265, wore a size 42 jean. I was huge, y'all. Like right. five, eight, five, nine. Was, it was just huge. Mm -hmm. Went back, so then I sit in the back of the class. Mm -hmm. They have the round tables, and then it was, I forget the boy's name, but he just was like trying to make fun, like, yo, uh, Sean, um, why don't you sit in your desk? <laughs> and, you know, I just was like, dang, I can't fit, man. That's what I say in my head. And, mm -hmm. a, and a teacher called me to the front. It was yeah. like, uh, Sean, you need to sit back at your desk, man. I'm like, go back up there, couldn't fit in. Whole class started laughing at me, bro. Just walked out of class, bro. Wow. Went into the bathroom in tears, like just mm -hmm. feeling crumbled, like, I remember looking myself, I can remember this like it was yesterday, but looking in the mirror, looking at myself like, I'm never going through this again. Like, mm. I'm making a change right now. And like, it wasn't like obviously what I do now. Right. But like, I remember I started swapping out white breads for wheat breads. I stopped okay. drinking sodas and like all the hard processed juices, drinking just a lot of water and like mm -hmm. the Gatorade lights and <clears> stuff <throat> like that. Um, stopped eating a lot of like uh, fats on top of like the meats. I was doing like more lean meat and stuff like that. And, you know, just over time, I would see my body change. I stopped doing the candies. I was doing more fruit, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like, just small changes. Like, it don't got to be dramatic, but over time, it make big difference. Right. Um, and then ever since then, bro, I just seen the small changes compound. And I was just like, well, what if I take it to the next level? Let me right. try, you know, just cutting out, you know, bread in general. Let mm -hmm. me try cutting out, you know, sweets in general. And then over time, bro, now, just seven years plant-based, um, really just... Bro, just, I don't know, man. Just, I feel like I'm at like an epitome of where my health is. Right. Obviously, you know, people fluctuate in weight, but mm -hmm. I just feel like mindset wise, mind full of clarity. I have tons of energy. Like, mm -hmm. I just feel great, bro. I can't really say nothing else with that. Yeah. Now, you mentioned something at, right at the end. That was a perfect segue, like your energy. And you say you're seven years? Seven, seven years, yeah. Based? Okay. August so. 2017 was the last time I had meat or mm -hmm. animal based products. Wow. So okay. like no eggs, no dairy, no no meat, no milk, nothing. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
So how do you see, you know, being an entrepreneur and things like that, how do you see, you know, your current lifestyle and, you know, working in the fitness and things of that nature? Like, how does that correlate to, you know, I heard you say energy, so I know that that's one thing. How, do, how does that correlate and kind of like catapult you when it comes to, you know, your professional business and things of that nature? So I feel like, honestly, bro, like it started clicking for me, I would say like second year in business, like business just as competitive as sports. We both got sports background, so mm-hmm. we know how competitive it is <clears throat> to be on the court, you know, so... When you in business, like the same way you built yourself up to be on the field or on the court or whatever mm-hmm. sport you play, you got to have that same built up for business. Right. Because one of my mentors, he gave me a, a gem. He was like, uh, business is even more competitive in sports because anybody can hop into business. Yep. Not everybody is blessed with size or, you know, with athletic ability and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, but with business, bro, anybody can decide, hey, I want to try to hop into this and I, I want to put my best foot for forward. So, yeah. you know, for me, I'm like, wow, like I got to power myself up to be right. the best version of myself. So, you know, entrepreneur, like you work 25, eight, bro. You know, even if you work <laughs> part time or a full time job on top of your business or just full time entrepreneur, like you got to be ready to go all the time. So mm-hmm. I just said, man, I'm going to take that same mindset approach I had with sports, transition it to the entrepreneurial space and, you know. It's got me through all the bad certifications I've gotten over the years to the point now where, you know, they call me doctor now. Yeah, <laughs> man, that's dope. Like just because I know you from when you first started your business and things like that. And like, like to be Dr. James now, I mean, I mean, of course, we talked about this, like our long, you know, like nights, you know, right out. When we, I first started real estate and you were just, you know, selling the trunk, products bro. out of the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, man, it's just dope to just see, you know, but that's what consistency is. And yeah. I feel like fitness is kind of like a perfect parallel for that, which is kind of why I started this because, you know, you know, I used to do the fitness training, yep. body, body by breeze and yep. not saying used to, we're going to still, it's still, still this is, this is a good stepping stone right back into it. For but sure, bro. that's why I wanted to kind of create this platform because I feel like, and it's not just about being just a super athlete or having six pack abs or, you know, working out crazy. Like some of the people we know, you know, fitness comes in many different forms, you know what I'm saying? And mental fitness, I heard you say that a lot of times. I just feel like, you know, <clears throat> in business, nine to fives and things like that, if we kind of can put some health practices and some, you know, some healthy habits in, it's just yeah. going to make that life and everything is kind of balanced a little bit easier. Easily, bro. Like yeah. if, if we don't do that, you can tell the difference from the people that is prioritizing their health, mm-hmm. physical health, mental health, emotional mm-hmm. health, spiritual health. You can tell the difference from the people doing that and the people that's not. Mm-hmm. You know, over time, you're going to see the separation, the gap going to just get bigger and bigger. And you're going to wonder why, like, yo, we started this at the same time. Or, you know, I started this before he got into it. But now he or she, you know, they, they, they leaps and bounds ahead of me. You know, what's going on? They just still the ones doing the work over time that no one see. Mm-hmm. So... That's how you can kind of tell the distinction of who really is out doing it or right. who kind of just is still playing around. And there's nothing around. It's nothing wrong if you wanted to yeah. play around, you know, but it's all about what's your end goal? What, like, where do you see yourself? Where do you see your mm-hmm. business? And for me, I feel like if you want to be, you know, the top of the top, cream of the crop, you got to do everything you can to get there. And, you know, you still might not get there, but yeah. if you know you did <clears throat> everything you did, you're going to be at a much higher uh, position than where you started from. Yeah, no, that's a fact. I've, I've had many conversations and I've seen like, you know, cause I've been at the peaks and, and also the, the lows when it comes to like my fitness journey. Yeah. Just as I got busier in business, I felt myself hitting a slump and I kind of wasn't as disciplined. I was still disciplined, but not to my standard. Yeah. And I could just tell like when I was waking up in the morning, it was like I was, you know, trying to catch up to my day versus being ahead of it. Yep. But when I'm disciplined and waking up with my morning routine, working out, or even if it's just doing some yoga in the morning, you know, I'm ahead of it. My mind yep. is clear. Now I'm ready to tackle the day. You That's know what I mean? It. Having, I've had clients even compliment or not even saying compliment. They, they can kind of just see the energy that you have, yeah. you know, when you're, you know, operating at that higher frequency. For sure, bro. Um, before we get too much into the weeds, I definitely, we talked about your business already through some of your conversations. I want you to just talk about, you know, what is your actual business? Like right. what, what is it and what do you do and how do you serve your community? So basically, um, naturopathic doctor, like I said, but, um, just trying to help people not only uh, reverse th- certain diseases that could be in the body, mm-hmm. but also just for daily health, you know, more mm-hmm. energy, better immune boosting properties, mm-hmm. um, weight loss, gastrointestinal health, neurological function, cognitive function, you know, just t- trying to help people along with daily life. Um, so we make our own herbal su- supplement line. I created it about uh, five years ago. Okay. And... Um, like I said, bro, we started from the trunk, man. <laughs> yeah. Bro was one of my first supporters, so I sh- big shout out to bro, man. Um, just starting with products, I, you know, I didn't even know, you know, what they was at the time. We just doing trial and error. <laughs> to now, you know, we got, um, I would say, uh, store quality products. 
It'd be on the shelves in some stores. Um, just stuff to help people on a grab and go, man. And mm-hmm. just to help people realize that health is the most important thing for our body. Like, right. Without health, all the money, you know, all the accolades, everything that come within the, the, the externals of this world really don't mean much. Right. You know, so really trying to slow life down and prioritize our health any way possible. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm really here for. Yeah. No, that's dope, man. Do you have any like um, specific instances that made you really want to, because I know you said you started out the trunk and you were dabbling into, you know, what it was and how can you like take it to the next level? And I've seen your products grow from, you know, the sea moss jars to Yo. having like something that I would that I actually see in stores now, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So do you have any like personal um, situations like with either yourself or family members that someone that you help heal them, yeah. you know, any t- testimonials that you can share? So it really started, bro, 2018, 2019, my mom had a stroke. Um, mm. uh, she had a stroke from prednisone toxicity. Okay. Prednisone is a steroid people take to help suppress the immune function, the natural immune function in your body. Okay. For a lot of people, they own it if they got like autoimmune disorders because they got an over, overactive immune system. Mm-hmm. Um, but she was on it for too long. Mm-hmm. And um, she ended up having a chemical toxicity stroke. Um, she had uh, four brain lesions develop on the right hand side of her brain. Wow. Her whole left side of her body was almost impaired, bro. She was like kind of dragging her body around left side of her body just to just move around, bro. Mm. And I'm used to seeing my mom going to gym, doing like Thai bowl kickboxing mm-hmm. classes, you know, boot camps, like all types of stuff to seeing a lady just sitting on a recliner chair telling me, damn, bro, I'm just crazy even thinking about this stuff like. Yo, I don't know how much time I got left, Sean. I don't know if I keep doing it. And like mm. the scene there in my mom's face, like, it just shook me up, bro. Like, like I'm feeling it right now. Like if it I was yesterday, it, yeah. bro. Like, and it was just like, dang, like, I gotta do something. She's seeing all these specialists and they telling her, like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know why you're suffering from these symptoms right. from what's happened to you. So I started doing my own independent research. And, you know, over the course of about like six or seven months, you know, I asked her, I said, look, man, like you exhausted your resources. You might as well give me a shot. Right. So she was like, I don't care. Like this, I need I need some help. So like I said, six or seven months, bro, helping her out. She went for her MRI CAT scan. Mm-hmm. Brain lesions was gone. Like they was non-existent. And this is based on the. I gave her a, a new health protocol, so changed a lot of my lifestyle habits, dietary changes, herbal supplementation, mm-hmm. whole whole bunch of things. Just holistic approach. Mm-hmm. They called her back again from the results just to get a double take, different site, different machine, so they had the different insight. Just double check, same result. So they say, "Oh, what are you doing?" And she just like, "My son helped me out." You know, she didn't want to wow. say nothing too particular, but she said, "My son helped me." And this is bro. This is when. I just finished the health coaching certification. I really wasn't even like in school, school, like getting to the level I got to now. Right. And at that same time, I was battling with uh, DDD. That's called degenerative disc disease. This is basically where the disc in your spine is basically non-existent. It's basically vertebrae on vertebrae. So all Mm. the way from my L3 to my S1, I basically had the slimmest to non-existent disc to help with shock absorption in your body. So it was times, bro, where... I was just bear crawling to go use the bathroom. I couldn't even walk, bro. Pain was severe. Had sciatica, a pinched nerve, an impaired nerve, fissuring Mm -hmm. spine, all the stuff at the same time. And the doctors asked, like, was you in a car accident or something? Like, what's going on? I was like, nah, like, I just always had, like, some back pains in college playing basketball. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you just think it's from working out too much or whatever. Yeah. But I realized it's from living an acidic lifestyle, eating certain foods that I shouldn't have been indulging in, you know, indulging in activities I shouldn't have been indulging in for yeah. too long of a time. So I just had to stop those things. And they told me, you know, this stuff is irreversible. You're going to need surgery. You're going to need cortisone shots for the pain. Mm-hmm. You're going to need steroids and stuff like that. And originally I signed up for it. Mm-hmm. But then the Holy Spirit came over me. And the day I was supposed to go in for the surgery, it was like, bro, you're not going in there. So I called him and I told him, I said, I ain't coming. And it's crazy, bro, because I remember this like it was yesterday. Yeah. I called him and said, yo, I'm not coming. I heard the doctors in the background laughing, saying he's never going to get right. Heard it, bro. I was like, okay, cool. Hung the phone up. Took about 12 to 14 months. Went for my MRI CAT scans. Bro, I regrew three discs mm-hmm. in my spine. They told me it's impossible. I did the impossible. The God through me did the impossible. Wow. So this was all before like clinical trials. This is all before, you know, actual institutionalized schooling. But this is all of independent research, put my faith in God and just doing the work. Mm. And I just seen the results. 
So for me, I just like, I feel like to me, this is God telling me like, this is a gift that I got and mm -hmm. I need to actually take it serious. So I started to go into school and, you know, mm -hmm. actually learn about the whole body and learn about other diseases people may be dealing with or just bodily functions they need support in. Yeah. Because in this world we live in, bro, it's, it's environmental toxins, it's, it's MSGs, it's mm -hmm. GMO food, it's, you know, it's so many lab made things that don't really assimilate with the human body that if we indulge in it too long, our, our whole body and whole structure is just going to lose its genomic structure. Mm. So just really just looking into that, bro, and saying, yo, I got I gotta make a change. And yeah. I gotta be the one, I gotta be the sacrificial land to show people that this is this is true. This is actually real life. <sighs> and from there, you know, people seen, you know, the works I helped with them, mm -hmm. my mom, myself. I helped a couple clients reverse type two diabetes. You know, they off insulin pens. They offer all their medications, you know. So for me, bro, this is what it's about. Yeah. I feel like life isn't really worth living if you're not enjoying you yourself. Enjoy it. So what's the point of feeling like you trapped inside your body because you got so much pain, you got so much trauma, you got so much tension? We wanna we wanna break through those barriers. So right. that's what motivated me what to keep pushing, you? bro. Wow. That's dope. I mean, I've known <clears throat> I've known these stories, but just hearing it from that another perspective, I didn't know the name of the diagnosis and you know, I know you healed yourself and things of that nature, but just hearing like and actual, for real, for real, bro, yeah. I don't even like to take credit for that. I just like because I want to give glory to God, bro. Right, this right, is right. my faith, bro. Like, yeah, I'm just a facilitator, mm. and God mm, doing the what, work. You mean like, right? Because I've realized that at some point I was really telling people I did this, I did that. I ain't doing nothing, bro. Yeah. I can't take the credit for God's amazing ability. So that just helped keep me humble. I know that you know. I put a lot of work in. I've done a lot of the actual practical things. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, God got the, the end all say so. So right. I just want to give my glory to God on that. No, no, nah, nah, definitely thank God. And, and I appreciate you <coughs> saying that. And, you know, he's the reason that he gave you the resources and the abilities. And you're the vessel that, you know, is using that. And now he's using you to shine your light, shine his light through you and, and through our community. And that's I it, see bro. many people like changing their lives, you know, through your products and things I of that nature, it, man. And that, that's a great segue. Um, Cause we, you know, we'll keep going on. <laughs> so I want to <laughs> sure, make sure I get, you know, as much as possible because man, like what you're doing, like you, you know, like I said, I've been using your products since the beginning and I could tell the difference when, you know, when I felt, remember when I wasn't using the products as much, mm -hmm. I could see, I could see the correlation into my professional life. Like just, it's just so many different things The discipline with, with my eating habits. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a vegan, but you know, I was cutting out a lot of things. Exactly. And, um, you know, when I wasn't working out as much, I could see that correlating into business and family, you know, being a father, I just wasn't me. I wasn't operating at my highest it's frequency. High, so, yeah. And, you know, when, once you tap into that next level and you go backwards, it's hard. It's tough, it's bro. It's hard. And people may be looking on the outside looking at me like, oh, Breeze and Sean, they're, they're doing great. But have no idea because we have that different standard for ourselves. Yeah. Um, but before I go off on a tangent, like I was saying, good, bro. you talked about how the doctor was laughing when you was like, no, I'm going to do this on my own and things of that nature. What mm. are some misconceptions when it comes to you know, um, was it naturopathic? Naturopathic doctor, yeah. Naturopathic doctor versus, you know, the allopathic. The, the allopathic, exactly. You know, so for me, biggest misconception is people think that naturopathy is quackery in a way. Mm -hmm. But for me, I, I like to break down people that think like that. You know, all the medications, all big pharma, it all come from a source. Mm -hmm. So that source is stem from the herbal compounds that were already here before our time. Mm -hmm. So People look it up, you know, 40 to even 60% of pharmaceutical medications is derived from plant compounds. And then they go into the lab mixing petroleum oil and other chemicals to make, you know, the pharmaceutical medication for if you got diabetes, high blood pressure, you know, gout, whatever you're dealing with. You know, so I like to try to tell people like, well, you know, would you want to go the synthetic route, you know, that was created that is just going to kind of like put a bandaid over the wound that's inside of you internally? Or mm -hmm. would you want to go the natural route that is more stimulated to your body that has all the vitamins, all the minerals, mm -hmm. all the micronutrients that you need to couple the effect of your body to use it properly and then your body actually heal itself? Mm -hmm. Because it's not the herbs, it's not the food that's healing you. It's those things put in your body in a state of homeostasis that your body can heal itself. Mm. We live in an acidic lifestyle, like we said, bro. Your body is basically on fire all day. So much inflammation. Your body can't heal in a state of inflammation. Mm -hmm. It needs to be neutralized that come through uh, calcium, that come through mucus. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the times, too, people's mucosal membranes is overstimulated and there's too mm -hmm. much mucus and they get a coagulated in the body and they crystallize and they become hard matter and that causes more problems. Mm. So, you know, it's 
it's kind of like a, a artistry in a way when you come into the naturopathic field. Everybody needs something different. And then what I've been really tapping into more with a lot of people is their emotional standpoint. Mm. A lot of people's emotions are blocking their ability to heal okay. because their mindset is lacking the faith needed to do so. So right. that's what I like to assess for first in people before we even get into the, the natural physical side because if your mind don't think it's ready, your body not going to follow suit. Mm. No, that's, 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 that's heavy right there. And I've, I've heard you mention <clears throat> multiple times, like, um, and I'll show the people like some of your transformation photos here on the screen, um, how you, you visualized how you looked before, before you actually put the work in and things sure. of that nature. So how does that, what are some practices that people can, you know, do for that? Like, what are some, what are some gems like to like, to strengthen this? How do you strengthen that first before for, actually going into the physical? For me, bro, I would just say like, it's a lot of things you could do. But the first thing I would say probably is um, you got to identify the, dis the detractors. Mm -hmm. You got to identify the people who just want to hold you to who they know who you are. Right. And not to the potential you know who you are. Right. So find out who those detractors are and remove yourself from the environment. You know, the environment plays a huge role in one's ability to heal or to stay the same or to regress. So once you eliminate yourself from that environment, then I would say to quiet your, your mind, mm -hmm. Qu quiet the chatter, because mm -hmm. there's always chatter in our head, bro. Like it's, it's thousands of electrical impulses that gets sent back and forth through our brain every day. Mm -hmm. So the biggest thing we got to do is remove ourselves and then quiet our mind. Mm -hmm. And then once you quiet your mind, the answers will just come to you without mm -hmm. even trying, because subconsciously they're already there. It's right. just so much back and forth chatter in the conscious mind that can put a fog over our eyes. Mm -hmm. So once we remove those things, things start to become clear. You got to act on that first step that you know you need to do. And then the next one will be revealed to you. Um, because if everything is revealed to you at this at one time, you'd probably be intimidated and don't want to do it because mm -hmm. of all the work it really take. Like, as you can attest to, bro, if you knew all the stuff you had to do to become a successful realtor, you'd probably be like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do all this, yo. There's a lot of work yeah. I'm going to have to do from the ground up. Yeah. But you ain't think about it like that. You say, well, I got to do this one thing. So... Let me do this one thing. Mm -hmm. Then the next one will be revealed to you, then you just keep on going. Yeah. No, that's that's heavy. And that, that correlates to whether it's what you're doing, real estate, fitness, anything. Because when you're when you take out those external factors or the comparison and like you said, the surroundings and things like that, and you kind of just break it down, take it step by step and realize it's your journey. Yeah. And know what you want for yourself. You just gotta realize it's nothing's gonna happen overnight. And I think social media kind of plays into that. We think that, you know, it's a such thing as like an overnight success or, you know, get rich scheme because a lot of people try to sell that yeah they do, but yeah. like literally like all the people we see and we idolize like yeah we're seeing their glory now but we don't see the 10 years behind before they got to where they are and now they're a lot getting of that notoriety maybe even 20 years yeah and some of the biggest companies that we, we we follow apple amazon things like that started in a garage and it, it just it's all about putting that consistency That's you know it. what i mean in place and just you know it's your journey and like you said it's not always about the money and, and things of that nature. It's because what's what's all the money if you can't you know enjoy it. And to you me, know, bro, what I'm realizing now mm -hmm. is like, you know, got the child. I got a child now, so mm -hmm. I love my baby with all my life, bro. And it's like, it's it's hard for me to kind of like split up and divide my professional life with mm -hmm. what I know I gotta do with my family. Yeah. So you know, we so driven. It's like, how do I? still be able to be myself, but still be able to tend to all the different ways I'm getting pulled. Yeah. So a lot of the thing is we have to realize money ain't the end goal. Money is just a way to express who we really are. Mm -hmm. In this world, you need money to express yourself. If you don't got money, you can't get products, you can't get labels, you can't get packaging, you can't get distribution. You need money. Yeah. But the goal isn't the money. The goal right. is to do all those things that the money can do for you. So. Mm -hmm. Once you get a certain amount, you know, some people are like, I want to be a multi-billionaire. It's like, well, I think you probably was cool if you just made 500000 Yeah. You probably don't want to do the work to make billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And I think you will live a very satisfactory life, more than satisfactory with 500000 a yeah. year. <laughs> but people just, they just see the, the, the gimmicks that's online mm -hmm. and they just get caught in the facade of, oh, I want the bigger bag. I want the bigger potluck. And ain't yeah. nothing wrong with that. But you got to be have a, a way of self-realization to look in the mirror and be like, okay, what matters more to me? 500000 and I get to spend all this time with my family and friends and enjoy life? Or $200 billion, but 
I have no one to share it with. I have no time to do things I actually enjoy because I'm so always wrapped in the business. So, you know, I could tell my mind is maturing over time because I used to be that guy. It's like, no, 200 billion. I need all this. It's like, bro, it's really not all about that, bro. You want to have enough to where you can do what you love to do and enjoy life because yeah. in an instant, it could be gone. It could be gone. Man, you, you, you were talking to me just now because, like you said, we both seen where we started at and where we're at now. We're both at that, that place of growth and with me in business, like especially with real estate and trying to run, fit, you know, FB activewear and things like that, and, and do the podcast. He ain't trying. You doing it, bro? You doing an amazing job, bro? I appreciate. I appreciate sure. that, bro. And all I, aspects. I feel like I gotta, you know, sometimes people in our space need to give ourselves more grace. I'm talking to my, myself right now because, okay. you know, moving around so much and trying to put so many things on your plate because we have these aspirations. Once you get to a certain level, of course, we want to keep grinding. We don't want to ever get complacent right. and things of that nature. But like you said, it could all just be gone. And losing, you know, friends around me, a lot of people we went to school with are starting to, you know, go down. It's like it makes you realize, like, man, I need to be present. Like when sure. I see, when I see you at the gym, like, all right, don't just be like, all right, all right, bro, I'll talk to you later. Like, no, be present in that moment, right? Because you never know the next time you're gonna see somebody. And and we probably both had situations where you, you talked to somebody you didn't know that was gonna be the last time you talked For to sure. them. And um, man, that's and that's another reason why you know I'm such a you know, an advocate for, you know, living a healthy lifestyle. I call it fit, but fit is not just about being physically fit. It's mm -hmm. about just being, feeling good. Exactly. Things of that nature. And, um, yeah, man, and you, you're the perfect person to, to do it. And I learn something from to you, something from you every time I talk to you. And I Likewise, definitely appreciate bro. it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, like, um, what are some things that you do, you know, um, you know, on a daily? Like, what is your fitness, like, fitness lifestyle look like? Like my routine? We know, like, your, yeah, what are some of the routines that you so you for know, me, practice. bro, I got to go to the gym. If I don't work out, I'm the crankiest person you ever going to meet, bro. And anybody around me that know me know that, oh, he cranky, he ain't work out. It ain't nothing that they did. It's just me. Yeah. Um, but I've realized, you know, I got to do that. Um, I love going in the sauna. Mm. Um, I got to eat some type of fruit, whether it's a smoothie or if I got some mangoes or I got a berry bowl, mm -hmm. something like that. And then... Um, Really, bro, I'm really incorporating more meditate meditation now. Like, I was real, real heavy on it when I was going through my healing process. But then, okay. you know, with life, work, and everything mm -hmm. like that, like, you kind of could get away from certain things. Right. So, um, now, just really, just, bro, work out, <clears throat> sauna, meditate, uh, make sure I get some fruit, and, you know, whatever mm -hmm. else come through the day is cool, but I got to get those. those and as long as I probably, like, read about, I would say, five to ten pages a day, too, from certain abstracts of books, whether if it's business or if it's about health or it's about biology, whatever, like I have to read about five to 10 pages just so I know I'm stimulating my brain because the mm -hmm. brain is a muscle too. Yeah. And not just overworking my physical body. Yeah. That's, that's super important. So how do you find time to, you know, people, you know, I say all the time, I don't have time to work out or people may have kids and, you know, they're a husband or a wife and have, you know, all these different things yeah. work. How do you find time to, to go to the gym and work out, be a father, be a business owner, and then find time to read too. Like, so what, what are some things you do to kind of, how does that Honestly, work? bro, sometimes like I look back and be like, I don't know how I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I just be the hundred, bro. Like yeah. I literally just, I know like if I don't do these things, mm -hmm. I don't feel right. Yeah. And I know how it feels to not feel right. You know, when, when my baby first came, uh, I had gained like 30 pounds, bro. Just mm -hmm. dealing with stress, you know, because they come with a lot, you know. And I didn't really realize until... I went back to my part-time job and I was just like, yo, I, I don't fit these larges like I used to no more. Yeah. I ain't going to no extra large. I need yeah. to lock in. What's wrong right. with me, bro? <laughs> so for me, I just, you know, just try to realize like I need to do these things because if I put my, my health and my well-being emotionally, spiritually, mentally, physically mm -hmm. to the back burner for the externals of the world, I'm going to lose every time. Yeah. So I got to make sure that I'm putting myself to the forefront when it comes to those things. Right. And as long as I do that and my cup is filled, I can fill everyone else's cup. Yeah. I can't fill someone's cup if my cup is empty in that aspect. So just, I just got to go to the gym, whether if it's 5, 6 a.m. with you or if I'm going late night at 9, 10 o'clock at night, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to go do some. And then, you know, throughout the day, like it take what, 10, 15 minutes to read? It doesn't take much time at all to read, bro. Yeah. So I just try to sit down, lock in, open up five, ten pages, but that's all we gotta do. People think we gotta run through whole books in a week. Like yeah. you can do that, but bro, just just do something because that five and ten add up. That's add add up. And then actually, bro, you actually wanna read more. Like I'd be like, dang, like I gotta go do this now. I was I was, I was just flipped. No, I was going crazy reading. So 
just doing that, bro, is great. And then like the food part, it's not that not that deep. A lot of people, you know, just don't want to do it. They just so yeah. used to eating and following the dietary protocol they, that they've been on for years. You just gotta make a decision, like, yo, I'm not eating like this no more. Yeah. And once you get fed up, I feel like with the current condition, you just you gonna follow oh, through and make yeah. changes. Okay. Do you feel like people, um, like when you're talking to people and people know that you're vegan and things like that, somebody might hear this and be like, well, I'm not going vegan. I can't get right, right. chicken. <laughs> I'm not vegan, so I'm, I'm. You know what I mean? So, and I heard you say like you start your day with fruit. Are there any things you would recommend that people maybe if they're not going to go vegan or go full raw diet, um, like maybe what they should not eat in the morning or what are some I would just say food? like you know like I'm not one of the people that be like oh um I'm vegan like you're not vegan I can't bang with you I ain't like that at all mm-hmm. I accept people for doing who, whatever they want to do because mm-hmm. everybody got their own free will and I respect that choice that they right. make but regardless of whatever food they eat I would just say you know don't stuff your first meal don't stuff your face with food it shouldn't okay. be a heavy meal okay. it should be something light um there's actually tests and things proven that when people go take exams in the AM without food, they have higher test scores than when people that go stuff their face with a breakfast. Because people don't realize it takes so much energy for the body to digest food. Mm. It got to go through your esophagus. It got to get broken down to the hydrochloric acid in your stomach. Then they got to get sent to your small intestine for, to absorb and extract all the uh, nutrients inside of that food. Then they got to get sent to the duodenum and large intestine to actually go through the transit process to go through your body to get extracted out from your anal, your anal passageway. Mm. That's a lot of work, bro. Instead of you doing all that work, you could have used all that work to send all that energy to your mind to think, to have recall, cognitive function, to yeah. have more focus and concentration. But if you eat a whole big meal, all that energy got to go here first. So instead of going there first, shoot that energy up first. So I would say first meal of the day should just probably be like fruit, a mm-hmm. smoothie. You know what I mean? Like if, if you feel like you always you eat big meals to start your mm-hmm. day, I would just say, you know, just add more fruit into it and just cut in half of what you was already doing. And probably have the biggest meal like earlier in the afternoon, maybe like one to like five o'clock. Mm-hmm. Because that's where we're most active, so our body got more time, time to, to break the food off. down and burn it off and stuff like that. So that's what I would say easily okay. to help people see more of a result with energy and mental clarity. Because that's the biggest thing. People taking the shots of espresso or the coffees first thing in the AM is only because they feel like they don't got the energy and they can't think straight off the rip. So I would say to avoid all doing that if you're not already doing it, you know, just the supplement with water, herbal teas. Get your mucosa membrane stimulated so it can help break down the food, mm-hmm. and then have some fruit, have a smoothie. Then you could get into your other food, and I okay. feel like that'll be a good way to you know start getting people into a healthier lifestyle. Same way, yeah, and like everything in moderation. Like it's okay to treat yourself, like yeah, even, for sure. Even if it's like gonna be sweets and things like that, whatever your vice is, like you know everything in moderation, overkill sure. and anything can be you know harmful. Yeah. Anything, anything, right? So no, that's that's dope, man, and. Every, I started smiling when you started talking, because, bro. <laughs> every time I talk to you, like just your level of, I know you know what you're talking about, but I can just see, I can tell that you read. I can tell that you're constantly working on your craft to become, you know, even better doctor in your field and things of that nature. Appreciate so, that, bro. I'm, you know, outside of it, I'm proud of you, man. And, and there's no better way to start this podcast than having you on here, bro, <laughs> because, you know, this is important. You know what I mean? Like we, you know, we're young, but, you know, age is just a number. So I want you know, people in our community that just benefit from what you're doing. So before we, you know, let out, I want you to let everyone know, you know, where they can find you, how they can set up a consultation with you and, you know, keep it going from there. And for me, bro, just before we leave, I did want to touch on one mental point for men. Yeah, yeah. Um, for men, we got to feel more vulnerable, bro. Mm. We got we to gotta realize it's okay to show emotion and what we will think society claims to be weak. Mm-hmm. If you got to cry, bro, go ahead and cry, man. Because it's, it's more studies shown when you cry, your body, it could be good cry or bad crying. Good cry like tears of joy or bad cry, you know, crying because someone died. Mm-hmm. When you cry tears of joy, your body releases dopamine, oxytocin, and other endorphins. So that's helping your body create more of those good, happy feeling hormones inside of your body. That's going to naturally boost your immune system. Mm. That's going to produce more T cells and B cells thymus cells and bone marrow cells, neutrophils and macrophages. These are things that's coming to eat away toxins and viral loads and bacteria in your body just from releasing more endorphins. So if you got to cry, bro, you get the urge, go do it. If someone you know may have just passed away or 
it's a tough situation for you, and you cry, you know, tears of sadness, go ahead and do that because that's actually a, it's actually a detoxification pathway in the body. Mm-hmm. You're releasing cortisol. You're re- you're releasing different uh, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and adrenaline. You need to release those because if you don't release those, they're going to get stored inside your cells. Mm. And when they get stored inside your cells, that can cause trauma. And if you have a lot of trauma in your cellular level, that's where disease starts to manifest. So we have to, as men, just even in general, but as men, we got to really get in tune with our emotional body and be okay with showing emotion in these type of ways. I'm not saying get angry and start, you know, punching people and, you know, throwing bottles and stuff like that. But... If you feel like you need to express yourself, you need to do that mm-hmm. because you're going to feel better. Don't just hold it in because people said, oh, it's weak for men to cry. That's, that's old, man. That's, that's, that's something to keep us at a lower, lo- lower level of vibration. We got to raise our vibration by getting in tune with ourselves. And then when we do that, everything else, you're going to notice that you're going to feel better. Your life's going to attract more things to your life that you've actually been looking for because you're actually becoming more of your authentic self. Mm. Yeah. Wow. No, that was a great way to end it because I definitely, you know, I was listening right when you said that because I feel like in trauma in my life or losing someone, I supplemented by, you know, working harder and trying to mask it. Yep. There's like been close people that passed away like years ago that I still don't feel like I fully grieve because I didn't like, Neither, let it bro. out. And um, that was just people, you know, talk to me about, I need, you know, therapy and things like that. But I don't know, that was just great another, segue too. that was another, you know, kind of like a reminder that, you know, I need to you know, it's okay to be vulnerable. And, That's and it, bro. That because it's actually more masculine to be vulnerable than to hide yeah. it. Mm. Because if we hide it, you actually showing that you're not comfortable with your masculinity. Mm-hmm. When if you know you're a masculine figure, you can show your emotional side and know that that doesn't change me. I can still provide for my family. I can still lift all these heavy weights. I can still carry myself the way I need to through the world. Mm-hmm. But when you try to hide behind, you know, overworking, and there's nothing wrong with overworking, but if you're trying to use that as a masking effect it's over the emotion, it's going to catch up to you, you're going to have more burnout. And, you know, it's just going to take an overall toll on your life with your relationships, with friends, mm-hmm. family, life partners, uh, business and everything. So I would just say for men, man, we just got to really lock in with ourselves and understand ourselves at a deeper level. And it's, that it's OK to cry, bro. And it's OK to do these things. It don't make you weak. It actually make you strong because you're vulnerable enough to do these things. Yeah. I don't got nothing to say. Hey, bro, y'all appreciate you, no, man. I appreciate definitely. you too, bro. Um, Real talk. Let, I definitely want, um, you know, show people a couple of the products. I know this is right. just, you know, just a few that you have. Right. Um, but, you know, let the people know what you have, how they can find you. And, um, man, thanks again for coming on. I appreciate you, bro. So, yeah. um, y'all can find me at www.sajfit.com. You can also find me on Instagram um, Saj the guy or the business page is Saj Fit S A J F I T with an underscore. Um, this right here is our newest product line. So this is what we call the NutraCell Boost. So these are Irish moss infused with other herbal compounds. So I have two of them today. The one right here is infused with bladderwrack, and the other one is infused with soursop. Then we also have one infused with elderberry. So the main reason why you know we're kind of transitioning away from the gels and the powders is because these tinctures go through a process that's called cellular infusion. So basically, a lot of the times, people, most of, most of Americans suffer from gastrointestinal issues that is inhibiting the ability for the body to absorb the nutrients of food or supplements. Mm-hmm. So when we take these, it bypasses that digestive route in the small intestine. It goes straight sent to the liver. The liver synthesizes the nutrients and dumps all the goodies into the bloodstream, into the circulatory system to feed our cells immediately. Mm. So this is something that I find really, really good to help people. And it's also grab and go. You don't have to store it in the shelf or, or in the fridge. Um, the shelf life for these, because they made with grain alcohol tinctures and also vegetable glycerin, is about four years. So, you know, if a lot of people, they be hyped, they be ready to start their protocol. Then a week later, they just back to their old ways. That's cool. But at least now, opposed with the gels, you go back, it's mold or it's bad now, it's, 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 it's no good. Mm-hmm. But these, you good to go. Grab and go, take them on flights, you could travel. And it's small pocket size, so it's not going to take up too much space. Too much so space. to me, these is something I feel like is going to be you know, changing the game for a lot of people. And I'm excited because they've done a lot of things for a lot of people. I ain't mm-hmm. going to talk on it right now. Yeah. I'm going to let the lab results show in a few. But 
you know, they're doing great things for the community, bro. So I'm just super excited about these products. Yeah, nah, bro. Just just looking at the product itself and just, like you said, seeing where you started from and things like that, I'm super proud of you just on a, a friend level and just, you know, just someone who's, you know, been watching you, you know, from afar. If I don't Appreciate tell you, you, I mean, bro. I tell you all the time, but if I don't tell you, man, I'm <laughs> proud of you, man. And, and like, I'm, you know, I'm a person that uses these products every single day yeah. along with the chlorophyll water. Oh, yeah, chlorophyll. And I could definitely tell the difference on what it does for, for me, my digestion, um, you know, the inflammation that I may have, you know, from playing basketball, I used to running have a lot of knee that, problems, yeah. running, the activeness that we have now, mm -hmm. um, my recovery time is, you know, that much better. That's and I'm um, still learning. So definitely going to be hitting you up for more tips. And um, definitely thanks again. This I appreciate is the you, bro. First episode of the Fit and Professional Podcast. We're here with Dr. James. Make sure you follow him. This is not going to be the first time. It's not going to be the last time that he's on the, uh, the pod. Um, but yeah, bro, keep up the great work that you're doing with the community. And until then, we'll see you next time. That's it. Peace, y'all.